economic opportunities. So to shift <laughs> from this um, internationalization uh, uh, angle, uh, my research is also about uh, internationalization of higher education. And um, uh, so uh, I will uh, write, uh, move to, to, to the introduction part of my presentation. So um, the presentation will be focusing, focusing on three phases of higher education transformation in Georgia uh, from historical perspective and unfolding the developments from political, economic and social cultural lenses. Uh, the purpose is to analyze the system holistically and describe developments in a logical sequence to better understand the context causes and results of changes occurring over time. And although uh, the narrative starts from an ancient period, uh, the focus of this uh, presentation is, uh, as I mentioned, higher education internationalization during the last 30 years, but uh, starting the discussion from ancient period, I believe it's important to understand better uh, the, um, the context of uh, Georgian education system development. Very briefly about Georgia, maybe uh, maybe for some of you, Georgia is not a very uh, kind of familiar country. It's a small country um, uh, located in uh, South Caucasus. Um, yeah, so the um, uh, Georgian name for 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 for, for Georgia for, for our country is Sakartvelo. It's a different name in in Georgian, and this means the place where Georgians live live. Um, so, um, Georgia is located, um, so the neighboring countries of Georgia uh, are Russia from the north, Azerbaijan, uh, Armenia and Turkey from the south. Um, and population is uh, about 3.7 million. The capital of Georgia is Tbilisi from 5th century. Before that, it was not Sveta. Uh, that was considered to be one of the most ancient uh, capitals in Europe. Some other interesting facts. Sorry. Um, um, so some I, I can uh, I cannot hear very well. I think uh, the uh, stream is somehow not so smooth. Are you asking me anything now or? Uh, I don't hear. Uh, I will continue. I, I cannot hear you now, unfortunately. Okay. Now I, I think now I can speak. Should I continue? I will continue. Um, so um, some uh, interesting facts about Georgia. It's believed that Georgia is a place where first Europeans uh, came from Africa, first uh, um, some 1.8 million years ago because uh, the um, skulls of uh, ancient uh, um, uh, human, uh, humans uh, emigrating from Africa are found on the territory of Georgia and uh, specifically in Tmanisi um, uh, area. Um, uh, Georgia is considered to be the birthplace of wine because one of the oldest um, seeds or most ancient seeds of uh, grape and uh, vessels for wine were discovered in Georgia some 8,000 years ago. Georgia is ecological despite the fact that it's a very small country. It's ecologically quite diverse country with 12 different climate zones. So Georgia is also known for its very highest mountains and um, uh, also 49 different types of soil. So uh, Georgia was historically considered also as an agricultural country. Um, Georgia has its own language and alphabet, uh, Kartvelian language group, and one of the 14 alphabets in the world is Georgian. Uh, it's also interesting that ancient Greek uh, myth about Argonauts and Golden Fleece is also connected uh, with Georgia because the ter territory in Georgia, Kolkhin, is, is mentioned in this uh, uh, myth. Um, uh, and uh, last but not least uh, for this list, uh, Georgia is a country where Christianity was adopted as a, a religion. It was one of the first uh, uh, European countries where Christianity was adopted as a state religion in the fourth century. 
Um, so um, I will move now to definition of higher education internationalization. This is the uh, most recent, uh, I, as far as I um, know, um, definitions um, um, uh, and most uh, reference definitions of uh, internationalization. It's the process, intentional process of integrating an international, intercultural and global dimensions into the purpose, functions and delivery of post-secondary education in order to enhance the quality of education and research for all students and staff and to make a meaningful contribution to society. So it's quite a complex uh, process um, um, that uh, that involves many uh, directions but I would add to this that this is I think this is future and present of higher education and uh, probably uh, we are now facing that internationalization is becoming integral part for all higher education institutions in the world. So, um, uh, um, as for uh, three decades of higher education transformation in the post-Soviet period um, of Georgia, this is the period uh, of the last 30 years. This is, I should mention, this is only the tip of the iceberg. The, um, uh, as, as I already noted in the beginning of my presentation, uh, the milestones of Georgian, educa Georgian higher education uh, system of evolution are beneath the surface, are, are beyond that period that, uh, that I think is very important to very briefly review in this presentation. So it's uh, it's uh, um, um, interesting that the first uh, institutions, educational institutions um, um, uh, in Georgia, uh, it already uh, can be observed in the third century, so-called Kolkheti High School of Rhetoric. And the writings about this school was found in um, in one of the philosophers, ancient Greek philosophers, uh, Themistius, uh, who who recommended his students to to go and study rhetoric in um, in in this Kolkheti High School of Rhetoric because he praised the quality of uh, teaching there and uh, the quality of. Uh, Mass, uh, teachers um, in this uh, school. So this is the only kind of uh, evidence of uh, this um, so far, as far as I know, of, of this kind of school existing on the territory of Georgia. But uh, since the fourth century after Christianity was adopted, monasteries and churches were the main destinations where educational uh, processes uh, occurred and there were um, uh, writing and uh, reading and uh, um, uh, other uh, literary work uh, was happening um, on the um, um, on the territory of on the, on, on, under the patronage of the monasteries. Um, uh, so the first higher education institutions, like more similar uh, higher education institutions uh, as we have now, it's already from the uh, 11th century when uh, Gelati and Ifalto Academies were established. Uh, uh, by the initiative of uh, one of the glorious kings, uh, King David uh, the Fourth, David the Builder. Um, uh, so he was uh, very much supporter, and not only he was one of the best uh, kings, uh, who was the architect of the golden era for 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 Georgia, but uh, he was also very much um, paying attention to uh, higher education in Georgia, and he by his also initiative and patronage, first kind of mobility programs uh, sending the Georgian youth to Byzantine occurred. Um, uh, but uh, apart from these um, uh, academies, uh, Georgian um, um, educational cultural centers also existed beyond the borders of Georgia in uh, Byzantine, also in uh, Bulgaria, uh, by, under monasteries also. These were the places where the most up-to-date uh, literary work or uh, some uh, new uh, new uh, novelties, new developments had been translated and uh, shared uh, with, in Georgia. So these were very important um, uh, centers of education by that time. Um, uh, later on, um, if you uh, if you have seen in my uh, paper, you, you you will see that lots of invasions, uh, foreign invasions, happened in Georgia from different uh, countries. 
uh, but um, uh, from 14th century it was uh, quite, quite lengthy process and the educational development was also halted for quite a long time but again from 17th century uh, uh, the uh, work uh, towards developing education system was relaunched and uh, this was time when um, uh, educational institutions were kind of uh, separated from uh, religious institutions it was education was diversified and um, so you could find uh, different uh, schools, uh, seminaries, institute, gymnasiums already by then. And um, also it's very important that um, from the 19th century, uh, civic movements called the Society for the Spreading of Literacy among Georgians, also the Society of Georgian Nobility Helping for Students. These uh, were the kind of, I would say, founding fathers was were kind of uh, active in these uh, societies. They were very active spreading um, education among um, poor and uh, in the villages in in uh, in remote areas and uh, teaching uh, uh, read, uh, reading and writing to to Georgian population and it helped a lot in, in terms of raising education levels um, uh, by that time. Uh, but um, most importantly, uh, from the 20th um, century, beginning of 20th century, the first uh, um, European type university was established in Georgia, um, uh, Tbilisi State University, the university that I represent now. Um, uh, and uh, it was uh, established by Ivani Javafishvili, who was by himself a professor in, uh, in German university by the time he came to Georgia. So even though the the idea about establishing university started 100 years earlier, but it was only established when Georgia gained a very short, for a very short period, independence from uh, Tsarist Russia uh, and, the, and before being occupied again by Soviet Russia for three years. By that time, Georgia, it was um, uh, the university, uh, European type university was established in Georgia. It was in 1918. Um, uh, and uh, um, uh, last, uh, uh, while discuss while going through the historical developments, uh, it's the Soviet um, higher education system that, uh, from starting from 1921 until uh, 1991, this was 70 year pay period, quite a long period, um, and um, so uh, the interesting. Uh, um, kind of features of this education system was that it was extremely centralized. All the decisions, um, um, even very um, kind of trivial, very small decisions like the format of a diploma or curricula, uh, were decided in uh, in Kremlin in Moscow. So, um, uh, the, so, so the purpose is uh, to to train. Uh, to educate citizens for the union of the Soviet Socialist Republics and it was the planned economy. There was almost no unemployment because everybody were allocated to, almost everybody were allocated to, to specific jobs uh, by the ruling party. Uh, higher education, even though it was free and uh, public and accessible uh, or to everybody, still it was quite elitist and uh, um, uh, and it's, it was uh, open uh, not only for the uh, best and the brightest, but also for higher status families, it was more accessible and um, uh, there was no autonomy or academic freedom. It was extremely uh, controlled and censored by the ruling party. So this, these were the main features of the uh, Soviet uh, higher education system. So um, now uh, moving uh, to um, 3D after the collapse of the Soviet Union in 1991. So the first decade of higher education, um, uh, it's a period that uh, tentatively I would call 1991-2001. This is the time of uh, disorientation, I would say, and, and uh, very, very close to failing state because uh, um, uh, if you look from political lens, uh, after uh, the system that was very centralized and all decisions were taken uh, in, the in the center in Moscow, uh, uh, moving and shifting from the centralized system to liberal dem democracy or to market economy, it was not of course easy in the absence of uh, institutions, specific democratic institutions, in the absence of human capital that 
that had specific skills for this kind of uh, um, state um, architecture. So uh, it was so in, in the beginning, um, lots of uh, problems, uh, political problems uh, occurred, uh, ending by even state coup uh, and, um, and the changing the government by force. Um, uh, despite this, uh, still uh, the positive development uh, in this period was that uh, Georgia uh, maintained this international uh, kind of course of um, uh, cooperation and uh, Georgia joined different international uh, organizations like UN and Council of Europe. In terms of economic uh, um, lens, um, uh, uh, the, the attempts of privatization, deregulation, of course, happened, but uh, but this was again very artificial process without uh, a specific um, kind of strategy that that would uh, the, the serve specific aim and uh, also in this regard georgia joined the uh, international organizations world bank imf world trade organization from social cultural lens um, uh, it was as i mentioned quite uh, um, uh, in unstable period, the civil unrest, conflicts, rising crime, systemic corruption, un unemployment, extreme poverty. So this was quite um, uh, uh, quite a difficult period for Georgia. Uh, and everything, of course, all these processes were reflected in in a higher education system. Uh, and the higher education uh, was also disoriented, uh, like other institutions of the state. Corruption was uh, flourishing by then, especially corruption in entrance exams. And uh, um, uh, education became a kind of a business for selling the diplomas. It was like a diploma meal, meals and a number of uh, bogus institutions uh, increased dramatically institutions that were opened in every so everybody who decided that it would be a good business uh, they uh, uh, they opened the higher education institutions and offering um, um, programs in uh, demanded um, uh, professions but demanded not by uh, market economy but demand demanded by families uh, the families thought that those specific um, um, uh, professions, specific diplomas would be uh, more kind of um, uh, beneficial in terms of finding a job, whatever. But uh, it ended up by uh, 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 like training uh, uh, youth in uh, professions like, for example, um, um, uh, medicine or uh, law or uh, uh, international relations, etc., without even um, uh, uh, so that the uh, market, so that the economy did not need so much specialists, and uh, it of course caused a massive unemployment of youth. Um, um, this, apart from these developments, also uh, the uh, universities, higher education institutions, started experimenting certain novelties. Like uh, two two cycle degree system was introduced in certain higher education institutions, uh, but but this was also a very artificial process without changing the uh, learning materials or the um, you know, the kind of um, teaching methodology. It was just uh, artificially splitting the five year system that existed before to like a two, uh, four quite two year system and it it of course had a very a lot of problems in terms of quality and in terms of um, purpose um, to focus more on internationalization process in this period, it's um, uh, it was the time when the donor and international organizations helped a lot in terms of um, um, in terms of um, uh, launching several exchange uh, programs, uh, sending Georgians to different uh, European and uh, um, other American and U.S. countries. Um, uh, universities for studies and it was a great of course help and assistance to train you uh, with the you know, kind of innovative and modern um, uh, programs um, uh, and the government also had some certain initiatives very important initiatives in this period for example at the Lisbon recognition convention that is one of the main documents in the Bologna process uh, for recognition of qualification this was uh, first um, uh, elaborated in 1997 and adopted, ratified by Parliament in 1999. Also, ENIC, that is European Network of Information Systems, this is a network that exchanges information about higher education.
application um, uh, processes uh, was established in Georgia uh, at, uh, in 1994. Now uh, moving to uh, second decade of uh, radical, uh, it's um, the second decade is uh, I would say uh, the time when radical refor reforms occur. This is uh, the time when Politically, uh, so-called Velvet Revolution, the Rose Revolution happened. Uh, intensified reforms. Sorry, you have five Sorry. minutes. Sorry. Okay. Okay. You have ten minutes to go. OK, I will be very quick. Um, uh, so um, it was a time when um, actually a very radical reforms happened. And um, in terms of higher education, this was the time when uh, when uh, Georgia joined the Bologna process and new law on um, on higher education was adopted. And this law actually envisaged the, all the, the requirements of the Bologna process, including credit transfer system, three cycle degree system, um, participation of students in decision making, etc. So this was uh, quite um, aligned with the with the European requirements and uh, also this was the time when Erasmus Mundus program started and uh, lots of exchange programs, uh, especially in terms of institutional development, um, uh, occurred. The third phase, it's more trans uh, piecemeal transition, I would say. This is also again linked to, um, to change of the uh, political power through uh, democratic elections and uh, um, economic growth is quite um, uh, impressive, especially in uh, recent years. But um, uh, in terms of um, higher education, um, 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 you, the, it is observed uh, inter increased international presence and establishing international branch universities or um, um, in international universities is, has intensified uh, dramatically. And um, um, especially, um, it should be mentioned that, uh, um, uh, for example, uh, private um, um, endowments, for example, uh, Kutaisi Technological University, International Technological University, was established by private endowment and it is uh, it is quite uh, um, uh, modern and I would say very highly equipped uh, institution with the ambition to become the hub of innovation education and research in um, uh, Georgia um, in terms of mobility um, trends um, uh, the it is quite uh, progressive linear uh, in terms of international students coming to Georgia for Georgian students uh, going abroad it's a bit uh, um, curved it's it's not uh, so linear um, especially in during pandemic the number of students going abroad decreased but uh, in terms of international students coming to Georgia it didn't decrease even even in the uh, in terms of pandemia and so now Nowadays, it's about 17,000 international students studying in Georgia, and the majority of students uh, are coming from India. As you can see, half of students are coming from India. Uh, the other countries that are mostly present in Georgia, uh, students from Israel, Nigeria, Jordan, and Azerbaijan are, uh, but in general, more than 100 countries are um, presented in, in Georgia. 100 countries, students from 100 countries are, are coming to Georgia. So what 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 is the next uh, for uh, 2022 and 2032? It's a uh, it's a new draft strategy that is now uh, elaborated and uh, it's pending to be adopted quite soon. And the new strategy has quite also quite ambitious uh, uh, plans to have student-centered approach, with the implying that uh, social dimension of student uh, students was is implied in uh, this is is in included in this strategy. This the strategy has three main uh, goals, strategic goals, quality and relevance, equality and inclusion and diversity, governance, financing and accountability, and the internationalization is under the first strategic goal that is quality and relevance. Other important uh, milestones are micro-credentials, joint degree programs, uh, quota system for doctoral students, meaning one, uh, 10 or 25 percent of students uh, coming from abroad, and also program, elaborating program called internationalization at home. So these are the 
uh, major um, uh, major kind of uh, benchmarks, uh, major um, action lines of this um, strategy. Also, um, my, my observation is that this uh, strategy still uh, lacks um, um, some uh, some activities in terms of balancing the mobility of students in terms of geographic coverage. Also, mobility of staff is not very much, uh, and uh, the recommendation is to include it further and also uh, adopting pool factors to, to avoid the brain drain and migration of intellectual um, uh, intellectuals from Georgia. Pool factors implies better education, research and employment opportunities at home, competitive income, better working conditions and facilities. Even though interna internationalization at home that I mentioned the program mostly implies the activities in this direction. Um, and uh, to sum up, um, so as you will, as you as you already uh, saw from my uh, kind of narrative, uh, so Soviet uh, traditions had uh, uh, influenced, uh, of course, Georgian education system for a certain period of time. But despite that, it was also a lesson learned and motivation for reembarking on new uh, kind of um, um, work agenda and. And in this process, international support and assistance played a crucial role for maintaining the uh, equilibrium. Here, I also have some list of, um, of, I would say, features of education, of higher education that uh, helped the historical development, helped uh, to, to shape in Georgia. I will not read of all of them, but um, um, to move now to vision and mission from my perspective for Georgia in terms of higher education internationalization is that internationalization of higher education is deemed to be the most desirable and shorter path not only for attaining the level of world-class universities but most importantly for contributing to sustainable development social cohesion lasting stability and positive peace benefiting the communities within the whole region and beyond so-called third mission of universities and third mission of universities is a very uh, kind of um, uh, very well reflected in the new strategy of, of um, higher education and uh, as for a mission and motto for, for Georgia would be exploring benefiting and contributing with confidence strength and freedom this would be the ideal uh, mission and the uh, motto for it. But last and uh, not least, um, uh, I would like to uh, give some references from the Japanese translator who um, who um, studied in Georgia some years ago and who shares his uh, impressions about Georgia. It's uh, it's very uh, it very very well depicts not only weaknesses but also some strengths and some values of Georgia Georgia as a country to 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 come and to study and to explore further. He says um, the Japanese are very punctual people they count every minute being late in fact is in fact unthinkable georgians are gradually learning the value of time and years ago they did not see a problem in being late uh, over time i got to know this country its traditions lifestyle culture and as time passes i realized that it is an ex inexhaustible treasure after studying the language i studied its path i studied its past history uh, writing and cinematography. And the uh, last uh, quote that's uh, also very interesting, his observation, amazing qualities, hospitality, love of people, amazing zest for life. They express their emotions very openly, which makes it easier to communicate and be friends with them. So uh, yeah, now this is, um, I hope I managed to fit in time. Uh, so yeah, this is the what I wanted to say today. If you have questions, Thank you. Thank you. That was right on time. Now I invite Senate to. Thank you so. Oh, thanks so much. Thank you so much for having me. And I sincerely apologize for um, not sharing my screen. Um, as I mentioned to the organizers, given the fact that I am sick, I'm just going to. I just included um, a picture of myself in the presentation. And then, so hopefully you also get to see um, what I look like. So um, I'll be very brief. And yeah, so um, I found uh, Leila's presentation to be quite um, fascinating, especially reading her paper, um, as promised uh, a photo of myself and how I looked. 
And um, so just in terms of what her paper sought to do, it was basically a reflection in terms of the transformation in Georgia's higher education system. And it took into consideration both internal and external factors. And one of the things that I picked up when I was reading this is that history gives you answers not only to like history gives answers only to those who know how to ask questions. And I found that she asked quite interesting questions in um, her uh, presentation. So um, just a bit of uh, background. The location that, um, or the location that Georgia takes is important and plays an important role, not only in the past of its higher education system, but I also believe in the future of its higher education system. Um, and when you look at Georgia's higher education system, I think that they have a fascinating history that dates back to the ancient classical era. Um, as Leila mentioned, that they had established high schools as early as the third century. During the fourth century, um, churches served as the primary venues for enlightenment for its youth. And between the ninth and the twelfth century, um, uh, like Georgia had already established academies, which were basically their first flagship educational, scientific, and cultural establishments. So you would note that they utilized classical Benzenite, uh, Benzentine pedagogical models. Um, but like it starts taking uh, more of a contemporary element or takes a contemporary form if you look in terms of the 11th and the 13th century. During this time, um, Georgia was thriving politically, economically, culturally, socially, and in terms of its military as well. And during this time, you would see that it made great strides in terms of its education system. And as early as the 18th century, you would note that state educational institutions were already established in this country, which I think is quite significant. However, if you take um, into consideration uh, the increase in terms of foreign invasion, you would note that between 1921 and 1991, um, Georgia was under uh, the Soviet occupation. And the Soviet occup occupation obviously played a significant role in terms of the country's development and so on. Um, and then obviously during the time that Georgia was under Soviet rule, you had the Kremlin impo imposing communism in terms of its educational system. You had uh, more STEM focus in, uh, instead of the humanities. And you also had censorship in terms of all literary works, which I also find quite fascinating. And um, as she mentioned, uh, higher education was perceived to be something more elitist um, as opposed to something that was freely accessible to people. And then just to sum up the three decades um, of transformation in Georgia, um, after the collapse of the Soviet Union, uh, the education system in terms of Georgia was basically in shambles. You had high uh, unemployment rates in the country, you had extreme poverty, you had high crime, and you had a finan financial crisis. So while this was true about the country, what was also quite um, interesting was how resilient its education system was. So during this time, the education system actually managed to prevail in the absence, in the absence of financing and governance. So basically, in short, academics and admin staff volunteered, which I found quite admirable about this particular country, which is something I think a lot of countries can learn for, from. And then if you look at the second decade in terms of development, you had better governance in terms of the country. And because you had better governance in terms of the country, you also had um, them launching higher education reforms and you had them integrating or being integrated within the European Union. Um, but the third decade for me in terms of um, Leila's presentation was particularly fascinating because here you see a shift in political parties with uh, democ uh, democracy becomes more important. And as a result, the uh, ed higher education system gets to um, have more focus on it. And then here you see them basically making significant strides in terms of higher education. And in 2021, um, like uh, Georgia became a full member of the um, horizon in terms of Europe. But what I find most fact, uh, fascinating, if you look at the past of Georgia and uh, the contemporary um, events that were happening, is that Georgia made great strides in terms of education and so on when it was politically stable, when there was great economic growth, when you had development. But what happened when it was um, occupied by Russia, you had 
that's more of a focus in terms of communism, which basically stagnated um, growth and development in terms of your higher education system. And I think what is more fascinating about this, and I guess this is a question I'd like to ask, is what could this possible impact have, uh, the possible impact of the Russia-Ukraine crisis have in terms of the stability in Europe, and will this then have an impact in terms of the higher education system in terms of, um, uh, I think, Georgia, but also more importantly, Europe? Because I think that there is an interlink in terms of stability in the region, uh, the stability of the country. And I think for us, um, observing from a distance, you have the oil prices going up in Europe, you have your um, economy being affected by the Russia-Ukraine uh, crisis. So I just, I think that future areas for um, consideration or research for this particular um, topic, I think it would be nice to see uh, future research just focus in terms of if the Russia-Ukraine uh, crisis did affair, in fact have an impact on the higher education system of Georgia and how they managed to maneuver um, or move past this um, particular crisis. So that's just my two things. Thank you so much for your time. And yeah, as you go, hope you have a great day. Thank you very much. Very interesting. Yeah. Oh, do you like to respond later? Um, yeah, of course. Yeah. Uh, um, uh, first of all, thank you very much for this very interesting uh, um, analysis of, of my paper and uh, very interesting feedback on, on, uh, on what I presented. Um, um, and um, yeah, um, I would I would completely agree. Of course, it's very important to to look into future and to understand what these new uh, geopolitical developments will bring uh, will bring um, not only to Georgia, which which is. Uh, uh, I would say especially vulnerable in this uh, situation because of uh, you know historical past that we have in terms of uh, relations uh, with the Russia, but but uh, in general uh, in the world, what what will it bring and what uh, lessons it will. Um, teach uh, uh, to, 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 to each of us um, and and uh, I think I tried also to, to, to somehow find an answer in my presentation as well that um, uh, that um, internationalization that implies people to people contacts that implies sharing um, some ideas sharing um, some research findings uh, this is uh, this is one way that that probably could could uh, facilitate building the stability and positive peace. Positive peace, as you know, implies peace that that is also accompanied by uh, by uh, freedom and sovereignty and uh, respect for uh, human rights and uh, territorial integrity, etc. So, uh, so um, yeah, I, I tried to to uh, attach to internationalization process since I'm looking at these processes from higher education pers perspective. I think um, international internationalization and increased cooperation and partnership uh, between uh, countries will significantly contribute uh, to this process. But of course it will also bring some negative consequences and um yeah, and, and of course, it will some uh, uh, push back some developments that we already considered uh, to be uh, to be on a higher level before that. Uh, for example, in Bologna process, as you know, Russia is is also a member of Bologna process, but now with these developments, it switched uh, from uh, kind of uh, from these developments, and it's of course a lost opportunity, lost uh, opportunity for, for for higher education system in Russia. So. This is, uh, yeah, this is the reality we're living. Thank you. Thank you. The floor now is open to questions or comments from the audience, those online and in the, this room. Camilla. Okay, um, thanks very much, um, Lena. That was extremely interesting. It's a part of the world that I'm not familiar with, um, but I know more now than I did. And I was particularly interested because we're in the process of organizing an international conference in Bulgaria next year, another part of the world I'm learning a lot about. So I'm, I'm very interested about in the whole sort of geography of the region that, um, that you live and work in. 
Um, these quest there are a couple of questions. They're not directly about internationalization, although I suppose indirectly they are, but I, I hope that's okay. So I've, I've probably got three uh, questions. Um, the first one was you described the decade 2002 to 2012 as a period of radical reform. Could you elaborate on the ways in which the reform was radical as opposed to something else and, and how you understand that? And um, that's the first one. Um, the second one, I suppose, is more about um, internationalization. And I'm interested here on the sort of overall um, impact or effect on this inherited um, higher education Soviet system. I mean, it was there for 70 years. So, um, and the key features appear to be the centralization, um, maybe not Moscow, but Tbilisi, the lack of academic freedom and the elitism of the system. So in, in what ways, if any, has internationalization had an impact on those key inherited features of the Soviet system? And then the third question is, um, in terms of this interna internationalization, are there continued links and engagements with Russia um, and also with the region, as opposed to looking to Western Europe or North America or, or whatever? Thanks very much for an extremely interesting talk. Thank you. So would you prefer to answer or more questions? Should as you as you uh, prefer, uh, yeah. If you, I can answer these questions and move, or or I we can get more questions and then I'll um, try to answer. Okay, I think you respond, then you will take other questions. Okay. So uh, a very uh, very interesting, uh, of course, very uh, important questions. Um, uh, thank you for that. Um, so the first question about radical reforms. That was the second um, uh, second decade of uh, higher education transformation in Georgia. It's uh, from 2001 and um, uh, 2011. I I called this period radical time of a period of radical reforms because. Uh, it was a total shift from uh, from um, um, kind of um, uh, from the system, from the mentality, I would say, at the level of mentality, and also in terms of institutional changes, in terms of leg legislative changes. So, in all directions, changes have happened at one, like um, on a par in, at the same time. So, um, as I said, Georgia joined the Bologna process and imply, it implied introducing a lot of tra changes, like uh, moving to three-cycle degree system for all uh, higher education institutions, not for uh, some of them, but it was already in the law. So, it implied changing governance system and inclusion of students in decision-making, and it was also so in the law that it, it was different kind of type of uh, um, uh, governance of higher education. Also, um, um, uh, in my paper, I also mentioned that uh, on behalf of Bologna process, some very sensitive issues were also kind of uh, implemented. Uh, for example, merging different higher education institutions, because as, as I mentioned earlier, there were lots of uh, low quality educational institutions. So the accreditation system that was adopted by this time, it uh, uh, of course implied also just closing some institutions and also merging some institutions and merging some faculties within institutions and it, it of course caused lots of uh, um, uh, lots of uh, kind of negative reactions from those uh, academic or administrative sta staff who were uh, who were used who were accustomed to the kind of older style uh, functioning and it caused of course tension and also generational generational tensions so um, that's why it was act actually the time when uh, the new modern education system was introduced in Georgia. So I, I hope I answered to this and it was in a very short period of time done these changes. Um, the second question that was about uh, Soviet legacy and how it uh, how it um, 
what influence, what impact it had uh, at a later stage. Um, so um, the Soviet legacy, legacy was mostly uh, felt negatively felt uh, uh, right away after collapse of the Soviet Union. Um, uh, so um, um, centralized system implied that actually decision making, um, uh, responsi taking responsibility on decisions was not uh, kind of uh, was not uh, institutional within the uh, higher education, within universities. So changing the system caused some very ugly developments, like um, uh, like um, I mentioned rampant corruption, for example, uh, uh, in entrance exams. And I um, uh, didn't mention also in, during the second phase that was uh, introduction of unified national exams. Actually, this was the measure, very radical measure to eradicate corruption in entrance exams. That was a very, very a severe problem uh, for that time. Uh, elitism, it, it was, uh, elitism was very negatively reflected in a way that um, um, in Soviet times it was like um, a general uh, a professional, for example, post-secondary vocational education was considered kind of secondary uh, value um, education level, something something that was associated with the less capacities, with the less uh, kind of uh, um, uh, possibilities in life and uh, uh, and this was kind of maintained, this negative uh, attitude uh, also post-Soviet time and everybody, like all families, wanted higher education diplomas for their kids. It's of course not only for Georgia, this, this issue may be in, today in some European countries you can also uh, detect this kind of tendencies that higher education is considered to be of, course, of higher value, but but um, but in Georgia it was uh, even today it is uh, very um, um, it is felt this kind of attitude towards uh, um, uh, towards a kind of higher education. Uh, yeah, uh, and uh, as for. Uh, Third, the question uh, maintaining uh, links with Russia. Uh, yeah, in in terms of uh, higher education, to my knowledge, it's it's uh, it's everything as far as I know nowadays. Especially, it's uh, it's of course halted and. Uh, and um, yeah, Georgia, Russia is the uh, Georgia was part of the Bologna process. In the Bologna process, there were kind of um, regular meetings of different uh, uh, country representatives, ministries, and this was possibility to to exchange some views, viewpoints, and to to share some ideas. But this this possibility is also um, uh, kind of closed for for the time being. So uh, um, yeah. And right now, it's it becomes yeah really complicated to maintain this academic uh, uh, relations, especially when this isolation, self isolation of Russia is occurring. Yeah. Thank you. Okay, so I uh, I saw a hand up from Ambassador Baker. So before you ask your question, there is a comment in the chat box from Elizabeth Cook saying that was fantastic, Leila. Thank you very much. Very interesting and helpful very, with respect to my work. Thank you for sharing your knowledge with us. Then there's another comment say thank from uh, Olympia. Thank you for your presentation. I would like to ask you how would you describe the quality of education from the rural areas and from poor urban areas? And uh, we'll take the question from Ambassador Baker. I think that will be the last set of questions. Uh, thank you very much. Uh, but do you hear me well? Yes. Yes, thank you very much. Uh, but I don't have a question, actually. I have a very brief comment. I'll be very fast. I want to thank uh, Ms. Maisuradze for this presentation and to discussant um, Ms. Solomon and organizers. It, it was really very interesting, even for me, for ambassador who <laughs> is supposed to know everything, including about education. My comment will be about this exactly internationalization. Uh, you know, when I arrived here as first Georgian ambassador to South Africa, I identified higher education as a main one of the main focuses where I could link up to countries. And um, uh, to tell the truth, uh, currently we have linked up already three universities uh, with uh, Georgian universities. Uh, several years ago, it was uh, Tbilisi State University. 
uh, who uh, signed memorandum of understanding with Pretoria University and uh, uni uh, University of uh, Johannesburg with Strand, the Wits University. And so now it is up in the hands of uh, two universities and uh, professors and students how they utilize this tool. Uh, and the third connection that we made several years ago was between Center of Excellence in Paleontology of, uh, of Wits University and the Georgian um, National Museum. And our paleontologists, as far as I know, they cooperate very, very closely. And uh, uh, just a recent development, we already also uh, put a, brought together uh, U UJ, University of Johannesburg, and uh, Caucasus University uh, in Georgia, which is one of the best um, uh, private universities. And just uh, on the 30th of July this year, uh, uh, Vice Chancellor of United uh, UJ, uh, Professor Marvala, was in Georgia with delegation, and they signed MOU bit, uh, for on cooperation between these two, two universities. And uh, uh, by the way, Professor Marwala was, um, it was announced recently that will become also next year uh, uh, rector and uh, rector of uh, uh, United Nations University in Tokyo. So it coincided with the Georgia visit, this announcement, and it was very pleasant to hear. And, uh, uh, and one point I want to make, I very much hope that, you know, uh, linking up this, uh, for example, University of Johannesburg, a private university uh, like Caucasus University. Uh, now, um, it is um, from uh, my standpoint, it is very interesting how far they will go, these two private, uh, like uh, a private university in Georgia, in comparison with the state university, like uh, Tbilisi State University, which also signed. Uh, MOU like years ago, but I have not seen too much activity, you know, and uh, it will be very interesting now when we have another cooperation going uh, involving private university, how it will tell on this intensity of this cooperation with the South African universities. This is um, one point and the final point is that based on my observation, uh, Georgian students, you know, they are more inclined to look currently um, uh, to the West, kind of uh, uh, um, going uh, to European universities, to American universities. But of course, we tried ourselves to bring in picture for Georgian students, also African, South African universities. And I hope very much that there, we shall see more uh, Georgians coming to South Africa and more South Africans going to Georgia. Thank you very much for this opportunity to make a comment. Thank you yeah. very much. Yeah, thank you. Uh, yes. I'm afraid we have run out of time, but uh, people, if you want to engage further with Helena, yeah, I think she'll be available. And uh, uh, yeah, I I just wanted to very briefly mention that um, um, that uh, yeah, it's it's uh, uh, of course very important to 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 uh, kind of enlarge to to spread out the geographical coverage of uh, uh, cooperation uh, between universities, not only at uh, exchange level of students uh, going and coming to Georgia, but also institutional partnerships. Yeah, and it's very important that. Uh, um, that yeah, um, uh, South African uh, universities are more actively um, cooperating with Georgia, and yeah, this was also my recommendation in my presentation that this should become kind of more focused. That yeah, this is also linked to maybe lack of uh, information, lack of knowledge about certain possibilities uh, in um, uh, different universities. So uh, yeah, Georgian students, for example, preferring to go to European uh, countries. This is also about. Uh, lack of maybe enough uh, sufficient information about uh, about the possibilities beyond the European countries. Also, um, uh, for students coming from uh, different geographical locations to Georgia, 
it's also as you as you saw from my uh, diagram it's uh, like uh, for example india was a kind of um, absolute majority of students coming from india but from africa it was very limited and uh, and also from other parts of the world so it's it's very important to have in the strategy to somehow balance this uh, geographical coverage that that uh, that uh, institutions and individuals benefit to the maximum and get the quality uh, they want and actually in the beginning I mentioned that Themistius, this old philosopher who, who mentions this Georgian school of rhetorics and he, he was telling to his student that it's not uh, when the student was asking um, should I go to big cities to, to, to learn rhetoric and he was answering it's not necessary to go to big cities it's it's important to go to a place where you have a really good teacher and you really uh, good, good uh, possibilities to learn and and uh, um, uh, Pontis, uh, Poti, he was mentioning it's the place where you can go and get a really high quality of education. So it was the problem coming from ancient times already. Thank you. Thank you. Let's give a round of applause to you. <laughs> thank you to the presenter and the discussant, and thank you to um, Ambassador Baker for the additional insights. I think we'll have to end here for today. Thank you. Thank you very much.